Welcome to my inspirational webinar on the UK Global Talent Tech Visa. Thank you so much for joining me today. I have a special guest um, who I will be interviewing this afternoon. Um, but just a quick rundown on what we'll be talking about. I'll be just explaining what the UK Global Talent Visa is. I'll talk about the stage one endorsement application and process. I'll interview my most recent client, Sarah, who received her exceptional talent endorsement and visa only just recently. And um, you can ask some of your questions with Sarah as well. So have your questions ready uh, or just pop it in the chat of the Q&A and we can get to it at the end of the webinar. So just a little bit about myself first, if I haven't met you, um, my name is Michelle Hewer. I am Vietnamese, I'm Australian, and I am a British citizen as well. Um, I'm a Global Talent Visa coach, and in 2016, I received my endorsement for Exceptional Talent and went on to get my visa. Um, I'm also a Tech Nation visa, well, I was a Tech Nation visa ambassador because when I first got my visa in 2016, it was very new back then, and they needed people to to, um, share their story and help others who wanted to get the visa as well. So I did that for two years and this is how, that's how I started becoming a coach because there were so many inquiries and I was helping so many people that I turned it into what I do full time now, which I really, really love. Um, I am a British citizen by virtue of getting the Global Talent Visa. So in 2019, after three years, I applied for my indefinite leave to remain. And that's like a permanent residency. And then 12 months later, I applied for my British citizenship. So that's the process that one would go through if they get the Global Talent Visa. And I'll talk about, you know, the amount of time spent in the UK on your visa before you apply for your indefinite leave to remain. Um, I spent seven years in the UK. I based myself in Manchester and Newcastle, and I had a second home in London and um, only, you know, with friends and, you know, stayed on their um, couch and, and, and crashed there uh, to work on my startups. So I based myself up north and then went down to London very regularly um, to immerse myself in the tech ecosystem because I was running my own startup. Um, I used to be a lawyer in Australia before I became a tech entrepreneur. Um, and I started um, my whole journey after getting my visa by writing um, a blog about my journey, interviewing other successful clients and recipients. And I've coached over the years um, over 1,000 tech entrepreneurs, senior execs and tech employees. Um, my success rate is 90%. Um, my clients received um, a successful result. Some of them, not all of them, maybe a couple have received um, their result within three to 27 hours of applying for their endorsement. Um, that was one of, you know, my biggest achievements and also obviously a great uh, result for my client. The average is about three to four weeks, um, but this was one of, you know, it, it, very rare that it happens, but when it does, it's amazing where um, it's very clear to the assessors and, you know, they look at it quite quickly that, um, yes, this person uh, should be endorsed with talent or promise. Um, my clients in the past um, are, are many and varied. Um, I help people from big companies to corporates, to startups, to founders, to employees, uh, WhatsApp, Sony, LinkedIn, Meta, Google, Zoom, Oracle, um, CTOs, um, CEOs, you name it. Um, I've pretty much helped quite a few people. Um, even though I've helped, you know, loads of people, everyone's story is different. And that's what I love about doing this, um, you know, every day is, um, even, you know, two software engineers, uh, two clients that I get who are software engineers, their story is completely different, even though their work is very similar, but even their projects are different and their story and background is, is um, very unique. So I help uh, share their stories to the assessor. Um, over the years, um, when I was running my startup, I was featured in a lot of uh, magazines and I was interviewed and I was doing a lot of stuff in the um, tech uh, ecosystem, um, went through, you know, Manchester, Newcastle, London. And this is the type of thing that the assessors would want to see in some of your application documents. And this is why I'm sharing it. I did it myself. I know how to do it and I can um, help others do it as well. And um, so these are the types of things. And again, everyone's story is different. So, um, you know, if you can Google yourself and find things about yourself, that's perfect. Um, so I've been, you know, on TechCrunch Business Leader. I was a judge for a hack online hackathon and um, interviewed on um, Sunday Times as well. So a uh, really great journey that I've been on and um, 
if I can do it, really anyone else can as well. So I'll help you with that. Um, and here it all started with my blog and it's on my website. If you want to read about it, I write about my experience in getting the stage one endorsement. I also write about how I got my indefinite leave to remain um, and sitting the life in the UK test and then getting my citizenship. So my story about um, attending the British uh, British citizenship ceremony is, is there as well. And it's, it's a really special time that um, I got to do so. Um, and some of my successful clients here, I've interviewed all of these people on my YouTube channel, so you can always go and have a look and watch them. Um, not everyone wants to share their story, which is absolutely fine, but I really do appreciate those who do because it does um, help others understand the process. And, you know, it's a really hard and challenging process. It's hard for everyone. Um, and it's almost like, you know, um, it's okay if it's hard for you it, it, it's all right it's hard for everyone and I didn't have this when I applied I knew no one no one I was one of the top 50 that received the UK global talent visa and at the time we didn't know anyone no one was sharing their stories but here you've got it all here um, here are some of my clients so you can see they're from all different countries now, just a quick update. Um, last year, Technation made an announcement that they were going to close, um, but Founders Forum did um, acquire them and they are going through the process of getting a new endorsing body. Um, but at the moment, Tech Nation are still the endorsing body. Um, they will probably make an announcement at the end of the year to find out who the new one, new endorsing body is. It could be Tech Nation again, but we don't know. So just keep applying as normal um, and don't worry about that. So what is the Global Talent Visa? It used to be called the Exceptional Talent Visa, which I got. Um, it's a special visa to allow highly skilled tech entrepreneurs and employees um, working in the digital tech sector, um, the ability to apply for the right to live in, in the UK for up to five years. There's a two-stage process and you have to be endorsed by uh, Tech Nation. Uh, by meeting the strict criteria from Tech Nation. And then once you are endorsed um, by Tech Nation, you can then get on to stage two and that's to apply for your visa. Um, it is more than a job application or go through the criteria. Um, and there are no, a number of global talent visas. Um, there's different endorsing bodies. Tech Nation is the endorsing body for the digital tech route. Um, they did have a, um, a hashtag Tech Nation visa just to distinguish themselves, but there's uh, the global talent visa for fashion, for arts, for science and engineering, architecture. So there's lots of different ones, but um, Tech Nation or digital tech uh, visa is, is the only one that I deal with. The benefits is you get the freedom and flexibility to work in the UK for up to five years. You can apply for indefinite leave to remain and British citizenship. You can um, switch. So if you're on existing visas, uh, there's a list of certain visas that can switch over to the global talent. Um, the main one that I do help with is the student one and the um, tier two, the skilled worker visa. Um, the skilled worker visa is really good to switch from only because the time in the UK that you've spent counts towards the time uh, for your global talent visa in order to get the indefinite leave to remain. Um, when I applied, though, I had an entrepreneur's visa, which is no longer in existence. It's almost like an innovator's visa now. Um, and my time in the UK counted towards the global talent visa as well. But that visa is no longer in existence. But that's how I did it. Um, you can also bring your dependents with you. You can register a UK limited company. Now, this was really important for when I helped students who um, want to start their own companies. They're on student visas and they're restricted in where they can work and um, whether or not they can register their startups. So that, that's really important to them. Um, you can also work for a tech company without the need for a company sponsorship. Um, I mentioned that some people do switch from their skilled worker to global talent, but some people don't have that and they get their own visa and then they can work for whichever company they want to. Um, the visa, and that's why the visa is attached to you. Um, I was working for my startup and then I wanted to have a break and work for an accelerator and a university and I could do that. It, I had that freedom and then went back to my startup. So it gave me that freedom and flexibility. It's also quite cost effective in terms of stage one application. It's in the hundreds, but it's only when you're endorsed and you apply for stage two, the visa is when it goes up only because you're paying for, um, you know, the healthcare, the immigration health surcharge. But overall, it is quite cost effective. Now, just some of the stats, um, we've got, you know, a lot of people coming from USA, India, Nigeria, Canada, Russia, and um, there's 90 plus um, people from different 90 
people from 90 plus countries that apply. So there's people from all over the world. There's a 54% endorsement rate. Um, and so that's not great. It's one in two that get through. Um, it's not to say, you know, you might not be right for it. It's just did you fulfill the criteria in order to receive the endorsement? And that's where a lot of people struggle with. And that's what I help with. Um, over the years, there's been more than 3000 successful recipients. It doesn't seem like a lot. Um, as I said, it's, it's such an arduous process, but also when I applied and only in the last couple of years that they lifted a cap, there used to be a, a cap of only 200 people per year could get the endorsement. Um, and I was one of the, the people that, you know, um, when that rule applied, I was very stressed, like there's only 200, what if I don't make it? Um, but now they've lifted that cap. So anyone who um, meets the criteria could potentially be endorsed. So there's unlimited endorsements. Um, you can apply for talent or promise and I'll go through that. Um, there's stats where there's more people applying under talent than promise. Um, and obviously, um, you know, more men work in tech than women. So obviously there's going to be a 75, 25% difference. And also once you receive the endorsement and visa, you can join the Tech Nation Visa Alumni, which I'm a part of. And it's it's a community of people who've gone through this process, got the visas in the UK. And there's a community there. We're on Slack, Facebook, um, mainly on Slack to um, ask questions and they have host lots of events and things like that. So you can join that community. As I said, over the years, there have been um, a number of applications um, uh, submitted, but not everyone gets it. Obviously, there's a 54% uh, success rate. I was down here 2016, so I was back here. There's not many stats there. So you can see over the years, you know, they've had amb ambassadors, people writing about it, talking about their journey. That's why more people know about it. And it's just it's just going up and up and up. Um, and these uh, older stats in 2020, this is before Brexit. Um, there will be more stats, obviously, for people from the European countries. But this is just an indication of endorsements by certain countries. Um, don't let that put you off. It's just the stats. And I do help a lot of people from these type of countries to help them with their applications. It's it's The guidelines aren't clear. Um, I know I've it's gone through many iterations over the years. And when I applied, trust me, the guidelines were even less clear. Um, it was kind of overall, no one really knew. And to be fair, they have tried to make it a lot clearer. Um, but it's only because I've been working um in the last sort of you know seven years doing this that I understand what they're looking for. I see assessors feedback, I see so many applications get through, so many applications don't. So um, and, you know, people are doing it for the first time. So, of course, there's going to be errors and things like that that they don't realise. Um, but that's what I'm here for. Um, these are the types of skills that are being endorsed. Obviously, if you have a tech skill, like if you're a software engineer, it, there's going to be a higher, su higher success rate um, because it's a tech visa. However, you know, people with business skills can't get it as well. And there's a list of, of certain ones there. Um, so the main thing about this is um, th they really want you to be working for a company that's product led. And those companies that are product led are those that provide a pro proprietary digital technical service product platform or hardware as their primary revenue source. So if you work for a company um, or if you're a founder of a company that develops its own products for its customers, then that's what they're looking for um, to sell or to license but they don't really want people working as consultants or people who are outsourcers who are building products or advising companies um, on a consultancy advisory basis. They want you to be working for product-led companies. And this is where, you know, eligibility comes into it. And I do um, a lot of eligibility calls as well. Um, and the documents, you need to provide 15 documents in your application, and it's quite a lot. Um, and there's a page limit of about three pages each. So all in, it's about a 45 page application um, that consists of everyone has to provide their CV, their personal statement, and three letters of recommendations by experts in their field. And then you need to provide another 10 documents to fulfill the mandatory and optional criteria. And I'll go through that in a sec. Three pages each. 45 pages roughly. Um, so they want to cap as, you know, obviously the evidence that you provide. So it's all about structure and format as well. 
Um, so going back to the eligibility, you can have a technical or business skill, and these are just some of the, the skills um, that's on the list. It's not exhaustive because the tech industry moves so fast, but if you can kind of fit in any of these, then you would be eligible and you must be working for product-led digital technology companies. Um, they're specifically listed, as I said, consultants or outsourcers, um, people who work for agencies um, uh, aren't eligible to apply, um, and junior investors as well. You can be an employee or founder. I've, I get loads of questions where people think it's it's only for founders, but no, it's for employees as well. Um, and in fact, you know, 75% are employees versus 25% are founders. Not many founders apply, but um, the founders that I've helped um, who build products usually get it, um, but there's not many of them, but there's more people working for tech companies. So there are two categories. You can apply under promise or talent. Talent is um, where you should apply for talent if you've got more than five years experience, you're later in your career, and you can prove your leadership through your skills and achievements. So if you're more senior, if you're a leader, uh, manager, a CTO, CEO, or, you know, someone who's quite senior in their um, role. Now, you can also apply for promise if you have less than five years. So if you're a bit more junior in your career and you can prove your potential to be a leader and people are like, how do I prove my potential? Um, by doing it, by doing leadership type things, because you're more likely to continue to do that as well. So you can't really say I will do it. They want to see proof that you have actually done it, even though you are um, less um, experienced in your career. At least you're having a go at it. At least you're giving back to the community as well. And they're mainly students, graduates and more junior. So I help both. The difference. OK. And this is where the indefinite leave to remain comes in. If you go for talent and you are endorsed with talent, which means you've got more than five years experience, within three years of getting of having the global talent visa, you can apply for your indefinite leave to remain and then a year later, British citizenship. However, if you are endorsed with promise, you have to wait for five years before you can apply for indefinite leave to remain. So the difference is in two years and that's that's what the um, the main difference is for there. So once you apply for exceptional talent or promise, you then choose your criteria. This is the mandatory or optional criteria. Everyone has to choose this criteria and it's had some iterations over the years. Um, and there used to be, you know, two that you can choose from, but now it's only one. You have to show that you are a leader or potential leader in your field. And then the optional criteria, there's four and you only choose two. So you can choose, you can prove that you have um, done some innovative work for the companies that you've worked for. You can prove that you um, volunteer um, in the tech sector. You can prove that you have made any commercial, technical, entrepreneurial impact to the industry from the work that you've done. Or you can prove some academic contributions, so any collaborations with universities. Now, when you choose your criteria, so really there's five all in and you choose three, but you have to choose that one. You need to submit 10 documents all in. So really out of five, you'd probably choose, submit three documents per criteria. Okay, so three, maybe three and three. So that makes it nine, but you've got 10. So you would put the extra document, the fourth document against one of the criteria that you're stronger in. Um, to, to make it four documents for one criteria, three, and then three, which makes it up to 10. I don't know why they've done that, but before, I think the reason is because they used to have um, um, six criteria. Um, but yeah, it's, it's now, yeah, three out of five. Okay, so this is the process. There's a lot. So as I said, there was a stage one and stage two process. Stage one is the endorsement process. So you must be endorsed with exceptional talent or promise before you can go to a stage two and apply for the visa. Now, within stage one, there's two steps. The first step is you have to pay and register at the um, online at the home office. And this is where you pay your £524. Then you've got 30 working days to then upload your documents to the Tech Nation portal. OK, and that's where you submit all your 15 pieces of evidence, your 45 pages. So that's the first step, oh, first stage. Um, it's all online. When I applied, I had to print everything out and I had to send it by post to Sheffield and wait. And I didn't know if they received it or not. So that was quite stressful. So now it's all online. Very easy. No printing, no wasting paper or anything. Um, 
they have Tech Nation then have up to eight weeks to decide your case. The average is three to four weeks, but as I said, some people get it, you know, in three to 27 hours, very rarely. But some of my other clients have got it within a week or two. So it really depends. The average is three to four, but they can take up to eight weeks. And the waiting is the longest ever. Um, I've been through it and it's horrible waiting once you've submitted, but try and um, distract yourself while you're waiting. Now, the decision does come back from the Home Office because Technation then sends it to the Home Office and you are successful or unsuccessful. If you are successful, you go straight to stage two and you can apply for your visa. Um, and there's there's fees here, 192 for the um, fee, there's biometrics. And then this is the immigration health surcharge, which is when I said it's quite um, expensive. It's 1,035 per annum. So depending on how many years you want to stay in the UK, you've got up to five years, you pay that in advance. So 1,035 times five. Um, so that's that's the higher fee. And then they take three to eight weeks to do that. Um, and you've got to, you know, do all your, your checks and stuff and provide all your documents. Um, there may be other um, fees like a test. Uh, I know people from Nigeria have. Uh, my clients have had to do a tuberculosis test and things like that. But this is this is in general um, for people who don't need to do that. Um, for me, I got my visa very quickly, like within a week of applying. So that that this process is very quick. Now, that's only if you're successful. If you are unsuccessful, Tech Nation has given you feedback. You can appeal. There is no fee to appeal and you've got 28 calendar days to appeal the decision and then um, Tech Nation have 28 calendar days to review and then they decide whether or not after giving it to another assessor, the new assessor looks at your application, looks at the feedback and then provide further feedback and decide whether or not you are still unsuccessful or successful. And if you are unsuccessful, unfortunately, um, this might not be a route for you or you can apply again. Um, I do help people a lot the, the second time. I've helped some people the third time uh, when they've done it themselves or got help from other people. Um, but then if you are successful in the appeal, then you go to stage two. But this is very stressful. If you want to do it, please do it right the first time because it's, it, it does take a long time. But, um, but I do help people the second time around and that's fine too. Now, these are the common questions I get from people. Um, am I eligible? How do I present my documents? What is relevant information? Who can be my experts? How do I show my innovations? How do I show my impact? How do I show that I'm an exceptional leader? How much, how much experience do I need? And I've received an unsuccessful result. What should I do? Should I appeal? Um, so I help with all this. I've done it for so many years um, and I can really help you um, with your story, your documents um, and how to um, highlight your achievements and present your case to the assessor. Okay. Um, if you haven't completed my eligibility questionnaire, um, I encourage you to do it and I will assess you based on your answers. Um, so have a look at my website. It's on there. And my top tips, I am a coach, but I'm also a recipient. So my tips are uh, uh, from doing both. Um, this is your chance to tell your unique story. As I said, this is about storytelling. You want to give, sell yourself really and put yourself in the best light because an assessor is going to read this and you want them to know, like, and trust you through your 15 pieces of evidence. Your tech network is also very important because it requires letters from your experts. This process is about self-promotion. You need to promote yourself. Unfortunately, I know it's very awkward, um, but if you can't promote yourself, who is going to if this is your application? Um, being eligible is one thing. Meeting the strict criteria and a, um, requires a strategy in putting together all 15 pieces of evidence. And also, please contact me sooner rather than later if you need support. Um, I check people's applications or I have strategy sessions to help them get on their way so they can start. Um, at least there's a guide for you to follow. Um, I have so many people do it themselves, submit and then come back and say, I didn't get it. So and then we have to start from scratch. Um, so this is where I can come in. If the help is there, please take it um, or have a chat to me as well. So my next webinar is in two weeks time. I go through a lot more detail um, about all the, um, the criteria and examples. So if you wanted to sign up, um, I will put it in the chat later on or I'll put it on my newsletter. Um, next, uh, in two weeks time, I've got an educational webinar. So do sign up for that as well. And my YouTube channel is there, uh, my website, and you can email me as well. 
So um, I'll leave that there for two seconds. And then I would like to now, I know I've spoken a bit more than I should, um, I'd like to introduce Sarah. Sarah is my latest client um, who received her um, Global Talent Visa endorsement and endorsement like within three weeks. It was very quick, um, but Sarah has a very interesting story to tell and I'd like to welcome Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Hi, everyone. Hi. Thanks for coming and thank you so much for agreeing to do this. And not everyone does it, but you're... I knew you would from the very beginning. I knew you would say yes. You're so you're so inspirational, and you do share everything that you have in your work. In um, you know, you're a great speaker and everything. But I'll let I'll let you introduce yourself and tell people about you. Yeah, sure. So uh, my name is Sarah. I am uh, originally from Portugal. I lived before moving here. I lived in Germany for five years, Berlin to be more specific. I'm a full stack engineer. I've about 10 years of experience I would have to go on LinkedIn and check um yeah so I've worked at many startups I've also worked at uh like consultancies but the last couple of places that I've worked at have been startups uh I make a lot of some open source tools I've wrote a small book but it's been self-published so you don't have to have a publisher on your name anyone can write a book <laughs> <laughs> oh that's that's very inspirational because it does look overwhelming writing a book and being oh yeah no it is it is no it is very overwhelming I got very lucky that uh, my partner spoke perfect English she learned English from books I learned from TV shows so she fixed my English <laughs> uh yeah so I'm also a speaker uh, and um yeah and I got the visa this year like last month literally Oh, that's amazing. Speaker, software engineer, working for startups. You're an employee, um, author. Um, Sarah has done loads of speaking engagements for the community and it's so oh. impressive, super impressive. Actually, we had too much evidence, <laughs> um, which can be quite challenging, but we'll talk about that in a sec. So, Sarah, why did you apply for the Global Talent Visa and how did you find me? So I applied for the Global Talent Visa. First of all, I was working at a company that was only like six of us, so they couldn't, and they were American, so they couldn't really give me a work visa to come to the UK. And uh, my partner lives in the UK, so I thought maybe I could try to apply for the global talent visa. I saw that they didn't require a college degree, so I was like, I may have a chance at this. Um, yeah, and so I found you because I tried the first time by myself, and turns out that just was a terrible idea. I failed miserably. I asked my partner that works at Meta and they asked around and someone said, you should talk to Michelle. I failed three times and then she helped me. And I was like, you know what? Sure. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's why that's, that's how I found you by a Hail Mary in the, in, in Meta. Oh, that's amazing. And yeah, the Global Talent Visa is just such a great um, route for you, um, you know, working in startups and not being able to get a visa from a company. So you took it upon yourself. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that was okay. awesome. And I do have to thank your partner so much for introducing me to you. She's, She's a good um, egg. You know, she is a good egg. <laughs> okay, so what challenges and hesitations did you have um, before applying? And I know you had two challenges one when you first applied and the second time maybe different challenges so and how did you overcome totally them mm. like I think the first time I tried like I genuinely had no idea what I was doing as you said in the past in in this webinar like it's not very clear what they want and it's also like I think from what you read you kind of assume they will also do their work like they will also google things and make validate what you're saying but they don't you just really have to write everything out and like give uh, give um links and give proof and everything so like a lot of the problem that I have was that I just didn't know like that I was supposed to do all of that stuff um yeah. and also I think some I issue that I had was that I spoke to someone that got the promise talent the pro global oh, promise yeah. yeah and it turns out the guidelines are way less strict on that one so what she said was actually useless but I didn't know and I haven't told her because she feels very sad <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it is It is helpful to talk to people, but at the same time, in, in preparing to talk to people on their journey and getting inspired, but in terms of doing your documentation, it's completely different. Like, everyone's story is different. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, um, so what was the challenge in applying the second time? Even though you had my help, there were still a few challenges in terms of within your own mind. 
yeah, like I think the main challenge that I had is that I failed the first time. So I was like, yeah. I can't do this. I am a failure. Um, it's like, I think it's the exact thing that comes to your mind as soon as like you fail. Like, how am I not incredibly good at this first try, right? I'm also not an incredibly organized person and talking about myself really isn't easy. So I had to like overcome a lot of the talking about myself. Like there was a huge improvement from the start of me writing anything to the end of me writing anything. Because at the start, I was like, we as a team, everyone together made this. And if you're not supposed to say that, like, it's true. Like you don't do anything by yourself. Like you're supposed to say, I did it. And like by the end, I I would still like squirm a little bit, but I would be like, I coded this. <laughs> yeah. So yes. it's about like me getting into my head that like, okay, just because I failed, I'm not a failure. Let's actually put some real thought into this. Yeah. Yes. And and own what you did. Yeah, and like be okay about talking about myself. Like be a little humble brag a little bit. It is. Like, I think it, this you, is you did it. This is a genuine issue, I think, and it gets worse with um, underrepresented people in tech. It's like, it's very hard in general for underrepresented people to like talk about themselves in a good light. So yeah. Yeah, it's and this process, crazy. yeah. And this process forces you to do it, but but you have to do it because it's your application. Like I said, it's yours. You need to promote yourself or just say what you did. Even in general, like it's good. Like you will get better if you do this <laughs> exactly it's all practice okay. practice makes perfect yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> well it, done it, it does help you like ask for what you want which is good yes yes you want the visa why do you want the visa well these are my achievements I <laughs> earned this. you earn this yes and um, so who were your experts let's go to your experts we had to have three experts um vouch for you um let's talk about the type of people that you chose and Again, I think maybe a challenge is also asking them to help you. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, it's terrible. Um, so two uh, two of them were my uh, current boss at the time, uh, which is now my previous boss, but and it was another boss that I've had back in 2019, 2020 or something. And the other one actually works at the same company as one of them, but he's the founder of a... Um, a meetup group that I, the meetup, sorry, conference that I've been a part of since 2019 that I helped organize, that I spoke there. So he helped with both things because he worked with me at this company. And then I had help from another guy, Johnny, who was an organizer at a conference I spoke at. So we wanted to get at least like one person from the conference I spoke at to just validate and be like, yeah, she was there. This is yes, real. Yes, definitely. She's good. Yeah. Give her a visa. So, <laughs> so we had three experts. Well, they were all really experts. Um, yeah, but we had we, three experts in a letter of credibility, right? Yeah. Yes, definitely. And it wasn't just your bosses that we picked because they were your bosses. It, they had credibility themselves. They had... They were both CEOs of companies. So, like, they were both... They had a lot of credibility. Because yeah, they were both that, company CEOs. Yes. And they had external credibility as well. Yeah. They, yeah. they were experts in the field. So that's something that we really chose and you have to choose well in your um experts oh actually the first time i actually chose completely wrong like i chose this guy who's also a ceo but like i never worked with him and like the letter was terrible so like also make sure that you have worked with this person they can actually give you like good feedback because sometimes you're like he's also a ceo these he's great friend yes no yes <laughs> this that's, is also that's very important. important yeah yes it is Okay. Now, in terms of the criteria, um, there's three out of five criteria. Which ones did we select and what, what documents did we um, put against the criteria? So we went with leadership and that was mostly about speaking and the book I wrote. And we also had a letter of support that was from the guy, Johnny. Uh, so innovation is the part where you have to like talk about everything you did at these companies. Proof of, of recognition, like in, in some case, this was about speaking. Also about like I was an ambassador for a, one uh, for a conference and I founded uh, a meetup called Career JS. So it's it's a lot about like in my case it was a lot about like work I did outside of work in terms of community, uh, which is good that you can use this as like grounds to get a visa to do community work. So mm -hmm. if you have community work, like you can use that to get a visa, which is very good. Absolutely, you were 
you had too many. You had so many speaking engagements and you also had a load of work that you did um, with the community and you were also a founder of your own community. So I remember when you were like, can you tell me a list of the places you spoke at? And I was like, are you sure? And, you were like, yeah. <laughs> and then I sent you like a file with like 40 and you were like, it's a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> I said, this is a problem, but it's a good problem to have. Yeah. You have so many. That's um and sure? we, yes but it was good because we could figure out okay which one goes under the leadership criteria and which one goes under the um, voluntary proof of recognition criteria that advances the tech sector and you had so many and it was really good because the more evidence you have the more of a story we can tell and have people to support you um okay so let's let's talk about um when did you submit your application so the first you, you had two applications submitted um and responses but then you also had the visa that you submitted so let's talk through the timelines because that's important the first one. Oh yeah so the first one that I didn't get I submitted it on the 16th of October and I got a receipt I received it in the 24th of October and I was actually in the U.S. when I received it so it's really sad because I woke up to an email from the office. <laughs> oh no. Don't travel. Yeah. It's very <laughs> and the second so one that was actually successful uh, I submitted on the 26th of February and I got it back on the 4th of March which was seven days. The other one was nine days this one was seven days which was actually slightly faster yeah yeah that's and, still pretty uh, good it, right and it took me two weeks to actually get the visa like the after that from the home office like for verifying my information and stuff but also there's one thing that i have a biometric passport so i could fill a lot of stuff online you need to check if you can do that or you need to go to an office because yeah. in my case I got lucky because like i could just i didn't know but you could apparently put your passport against your phone and it reads the data on your passport yeah, that's what happened to me. Yeah, I was like, what? <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's amazing. So you basically got your the second the endorsement uh, within seven days and then your visa within two weeks. So in three weeks, yeah. you got your endorsement and visa. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. But, basically doing okay. the thing for four months. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was just about to say <laughs> When did we, like, how long did it actually take us to prepare? Like, it was four months that we prepared this document. I mean, give or take, because we were during October, Christmas as well. End of October to February. But, like, yeah. if you think about it, four months is not that much for visa things. Like, mm. I, after I moved out of Germany, I had to deregister because of how Germany works. And it took me seven months to get this letter back. And mm. they only had to be like, okay. So, if you think about it, four months is fine four months yeah. yeah yeah it's not bad I mean the preparation was four months not the the visa stuff the visas usually takes ages the you know the bureaucracy of it all but it was only three weeks for me it took it's around really the same fast. time yeah it's really fast, it's really fast yeah. yeah that's really exciting I couldn't believe it when you got it like I was just like wow that was so quick and um, so now let's talk about the difference between your first and second application. Um, let's touch on that. So you did the first one yourself, which is absolutely fine that you didn't get it because you're not used to doing it. You didn't understand the guidelines and, you know, it's still not very clear. Um, so tell me what was the difference between the first and second? Completely different. Like my first one, it was just a bunch of screenshots. Basically, I was like, I wrote a book, it's a screenshot. Like that was it. Like um the only thing that I really used were two out of the three letters that I sent like there was no story like I didn't have a lot of proof to the stuff and like I think it's I assume that the people the assessors would actually do their research and google things but no so like no so there was if you if you know that or sense why you're writing so much or there was way much way much better well way better indication to the assessor of like who I was what I had done and like who I was the proof to this also, yeah. very important, they accept uh, the Internet Archive as proof. So if the website you did is down, you can use the Internet Archive. Yeah, absolutely. It's proof. Like, it's there. It's public yeah, it information. Yeah. 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 So um, let me tell, let me repeat that there was a story now. You were able to tell your story in the right way for the assessor to understand that you were an exceptionally talented leader in tech. You included evidence that you didn't, consider um was useful or relevant um yeah. in your first application so your book wasn't even in there no i forgot 
it's not that I forgot. I just didn't know. Mm. Didn't think. Yeah. Think like I didn't really know what to put in it. So I was yeah. like, I'll just not put it. Yeah. I think a lot of it was also because my book was self-published that I didn't think it had any credibility because like it was just me throwing stuff at the wall. <laughs> Well, you know, you tell people about your book, please, because it, it is a very um, educational book. It comes from the heart, what you wrote, because, you know, this is how I started doing what I did. You went through that process and now you're sharing your tips, your guidance, everything that you learned. So do you, do you want to just say, let me promote your book? <laughs> tell me about your book. No, 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 no. Please don't buy it anymore. It's <laughs> See, this is Sarah is being humble. It is terribly out of date. Like I need to update that. I feel bad okay. about this point. Yeah. Okay. But <laughs> but it's but a book roughly, about React JavaScript yeah. framework. It's a, it's a JavaScript yeah. book. Yeah. Okay. Good. Well, at least people can Google you and they can find yeah. you the book. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then now your next project is you have to update. <laughs> update that book. <laughs> okay. You can commission your girlfriend. Um. Okay. So, what advice would you give to other applicants now that you've been through the process twice? Um, what what advice would you would you give them now? Oh, I think like first of all, get help. Like uh, Michelle has been an incredible help for me. Like if you can't, please get help from Michelle. But like, as, don't assume that the assessor will like use the internet at all during your like. The, it's like the, imagine that they will download your data, right? And and like not have internet while searching your stuff, and that will help you think about like how to actually send things. Um, so like basically write everything, like you're talking to like a five-year-old. Um, so, because a lot of them are actually not in tech, which is interesting. I assume that this would be people in tech, but it, it's not like they don't like this person comes from like Android and they send you someone from Android. No, that's not how it works. Um, okay. The other thing is just because you fail the first time doesn't mean you're not going to get it. Like, I think learn on this is that like a lot of it is about following the very strict rules that they have to adhere. Also, don't hate tech nation. Like, they have to adhere to these rules so that you get the visa. <laughs> Otherwise, they close because they can't prove that they made sense. So, yeah. Dedicate the time to it. That's very important. And comforting knowing that it's not easy. Like, it's hard for everyone. And if you find that it's very hard, then trust me, it's hard for everyone. It's not... It, it's, I don't think there was anyone who was ever like, oh, no, yeah, that took me, like, what, five minutes? And I was done. <laughs> Like it, it's a hard process. It's yeah. yeah. But if you're illegible yeah. or if you think you're illegible, go for it. Right. Like I think the first part of the visa until you actually get it, it's quite cheap. Like it's, I mean, it's not pennies, but it's not at the end of the world. Go for it. Like it's worth a shot, I think, in my opinion. Yeah. Ah, that's really good yeah. advice. I think I love your advice is because you failed the first time. You're not a failure. You're not. Yes. You're I'm not a failure. Things. I failed. failed. I'm not a failure. <laughs> Yay. That's really good. I like that. Um, I've helped so many people the second time. I've helped um, one person the third time and he finally got it. And that was like amazing. Um, the person. <laughs> sorry? Maybe that was the person that told me to, to talk to. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was, it, it is hard and it's, it's a mindset challenge. It's talking about yourself. It's, takes time it's all those things but if you really want it it's for your future definitely go for it I'm proof you're proof you know there's people who did get it um and yeah, yeah. so now what does this visa mean to you I have a lot of freedom I'm not like I think my main fear with getting for example a work visa would be getting stuck in a job I hated uh it has never happened to me because of visa but it has happened to me because of monetary reasons and I don't want that again that was bad so you have a lot of freedom and flexibility. You can really do whatever you want. Like you can make your own company and everything. And I think that like you actually learn a lot about yourself in the process. Like I think it actually helped my confidence and self-esteem a little bit uh, because I had to like put my achievements on paper like over and over and over again that at a certain point you believe it, right? Yeah. So yeah. I think those are the main things. Like, And know that it's okay to ask for help. Sometimes that's hard depending on what it is like it's hard to be like I failed <laughs> please help me <laughs> yeah how, how am I not good at this immediately <laughs> yeah no it's really good even just asking for help from your experts because they're yeah. highly they're very busy highly credible people so um you had really good ones but you 
I don't know if you were surprised that they wrote such nice things. They were. They they wrote really nice things about you. Um, and that's something that that got me a bit. Oh, do you, do you really think of that of me? Um, my you know mentor and experts wrote oh, such yeah. nice things, and that's something yeah, you right? can. Yeah, and that's something you can keep forever. Can frame it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. If you're ever feeling down, you know, um, read your application again, because those things help you through the hard times that reminding you that you are so great, you've got the exceptional talent visa, um, or the global talent visa because of your talents and the amount of work and impact that you make not only to the companies, but to the industry as well. And that's, that's what the UK tech nation want, they want people to make a difference and to build legacies and um, contribute to the UK tech sector. And you did that. Right? You're doing yeah. it. I'm doing Yay. it. <laughs> You're doing it. Yay. Okay, great. So I'm I'm so pleased I got to ask all my questions. Um, and um, yeah, you, you've got a bit, we've got a bit of time for anyone that has any questions for Sarah or for me. I do have one question from someone, but please start writing your questions otherwise if we don't have any questions we're gonna have to let Sarah go she's got she's very busy at the moment um and she's gonna have to go in like five minutes so if you've got questions please do ask them now um I do have my um next webinar in two weeks but I've got someone here that works for a cyber security um company as a consultant um their tester Seven years experience. Okay, cybersecurity. I do talk, um, I've, I've helped a lot of cybersecurity um, consultants, but not really, their the title is a consultant, but it depends what their company does. So if they develop products or have a service that's their own uh, platform or hardware, um, yes, they can be eligible, but again, um, eligibility is one thing, but let's see if you meet the criteria. So please do go on my website, answer my eligibility questionnaire um, and provide as much information about the company and what you do so that I can assess you. But um, yeah, I've helped someone from Germany who is a cybersecurity expert. I helped someone from Nigeria who is a cybersecurity expert. Um, one was talent, one was promise. So um, I've helped many people in that area. So please do um answer my eligibility questionnaire okay um anyone else have any questions i don't have any questions everyone's so quiet um maybe you want to save your questions for me later oh look there's another one oh, okay thank you <laughs> yeah that's okay um yeah so do you have any do you can you think of any anything that you had questions that you weren't sure of sarah when you read the guidelines or I do want to say one thing. Do not do the questionnaire on Tech Nation because the questionnaire on Tech Nation is basically just asking, do you think you deserve this? And that's a bullshit question. Uh, like, yeah. do the do other questionnaires. The, the, the questionnaire, it doesn't I really ask you for anything. It just literally asks you for, like, do you think you deserve it? Oh, uh, yeah, of course you do. <laughs> uh, does yeah. one have to pay? For, yeah, it's upfront. That's the main thing is that you have to pay it it was, I think it was 4,000 in my case. So you should get the four year, four year one probably because it doesn't make sense to get five because you're probably going to get the like stay. Definitely I forgot the name. Yeah, yeah. So, but it's still like 4,000. I don't understand where, what's that money for, but yeah, you do have to pay it. Well, it's for the NHS. So um, it's basically if you, if you need to speak to the doctor or anything, you can go and get it, speak to a doctor without paying any money. And go to the I know it's for the NHS, but oh. it's, it's just a weird, my partner didn't have to get it when it was EU, so it's just a weird, like, I don't, uh, that's yeah, kind of, that's yeah. what I mean, yeah. Yeah, the Brexit thing, <laughs> yeah, we talk about that. Yes, um, so when I, you'd be disgusted how much I paid when I got mine, but it was 200 per year for me, um, and then shortly after it was 400 per year. And then after that, it was 620 something per year. And now it's a thousand per year. So over the years, it's increased. Um, but yeah, you can That's pay. It it's crazy. Um, you can pay up to five years because it's a five year visa. Um, and Sarah's right. She she wants to pay for four years because after three years, you can apply for your indefinite leave to remain. But you want to leave yourself a little bit of a buffer just in case. Yeah, it can yeah. take longer. 
Yeah. Yeah. It can take uh, someone asked about proof of lectures. Like if you can get papers or anything, someone to validate that you've done these lectures, even if you don't have videos, I think that should be fine. Yeah. Right. Any... Like I was lucky to have videos, but if you don't, then this, if you can find like anyone that can verify that you've done them. Yeah. Now, in terms of um, volunteer work, um, volunteer work is specific to the tech sector only. Um, so I have a lot of people who do volunteer work for charities and things like that, but it has to have a connection to the tech sector. So um, so long as it relates to the tech sector, you can use it. But if not, then unfortunately, you can't use um, any examples because this is a tech visa. Um, people render says... Okay, so this is about experts. Um, now, what is it about the sessions? I'm not sure. Because if it's about um, the sessions, the people who are validating you doesn't matter if they're full or not. Okay. That part doesn't matter. What well, matters for like you know the three letters that you need. Yes. Okay, so um, people who rendered my services and can give it. Yeah. Yeah. So. The people who support you need to be experts in their in your field and their field, obviously. Um, you need to Google them and make sure that you um, prove to the assessor that they are experts. So they have to talk about their own achievements to showcase that they are experts in their field, essentially. Okay, so make sure we Googled everyone. We made sure that they had cred credibility behind them. Um, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it's difficult because you are the expert um, and you can't find people who uh, have more expert status than you. I had a bit of that problem, um, but I did find a mentor who who obviously was an expert in the field. So she was able to write a letter for me and I picked two other people as well. So um, it really does depend. We we unfortunately, when I work with clients, we have to rank um, people, um, their experts. And I hate doing that, but it's it's because that we need them to fit the criteria. Um, LinkedIn profile. Um, LinkedIn profile is an evidence to show who they are, but in terms of their credibility, it needs to extend beyond LinkedIn. So if they spoke at events, if they wrote articles, if they're well known in the industry, and how can you prove that? This is why I get everyone to Google their experts and Google themselves. Okay. Okay, um, I think I've answered all the questions and Sarah really does have to go and I want to finish up with Sarah so Sarah can go. Um, but if anyone has any more questions, please email me um, on techvisa at michellehewer.co.uk. Um, sign up to my next um, webinar. Hang on, let me just put in my next webinar as a link so you can register now while I've got you. Um, where's the chat? And you can answer more questions there. So please do click on that link and sign up for my educational webinar. Um, yeah, so Jerry, yes, I, I please do um, fill out my questionnaire. We, we could potentially um, use your part-time job as an example. So yes, please, I'll talk, I'll talk to you. Um, yeah, so I think that's it. I'm really sorry to pressure everyone, but I really want to finish on time so Sarah can get going. Um, thank you so much, Sarah. I really appreciate your time and your advice and your story. Um, as I said, not many people do want to share their story, which is absolutely fine because they don't want to be inundated with questions. Um, <laughs> but um, I think it's important, um, you know, to to share your story a little bit, just so that other people can see that if they can do it, I can do it, um, and you benefited. Yeah. I know, I know, you didn't really benefit from the person that helped you, but um, no, I benefited from the you... fact that they got it. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I would have applied if I didn't know them. So, like, it they made me lose like six hundred or five hundred pounds, but in the end, they made me apply. So, like, <laughs> exactly, yeah. And and they it led you to me. <laughs> All of this. I am yeah. only here because of this person. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's all about the journey and you know, no regrets. You you just went, no, let's forget about that previous application. Let's just focus on this one at, at the task at hand. And you did it. See, you're not a failure at all. You just had to do it again. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sarah. I really appreciate it. And I do, lo I'd love to keep in touch and let me know how you get on anyway. But um, yeah, thank you so much. I You thank don't you. understand how much I appreciate, you know, your time. And everyone, please 
if you can um, write an emoji, like pick one and say thank you for Sarah for, for coming uh, to sharing her story. Um, we've got people from Nigeria, Canada, UK. Yay, everyone. Thank, thank you. I love these emojis. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you so much. And I'll leave it here for everyone and I'll send everyone a newsletter and uh, the recording as well. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Have a great day, everyone. Bye.